Welcome to Cooking with PRTC. I'm your host, Mark McRoy. Today we're going to have a chicken perlo or a chicken bog, whichever one you want to call it. The ingredients are going to be onions and bell peppers, um, two kinds of sausage, chicken, and rice. And we're going to use um, jasmine rice, and everybody in the world's got their own recipe for chicken perlos. This is mine. Hope you enjoy it. If you don't like it, change it and make it your own. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to Cooking with PRTC. I'm Mark McRoy, and again, we're cooking a chicken perlo. We're going to start off real easy, and we're going to brown a just a breakfast sausage. We're preheating, the, uh, preheating it. You have to use a non-stick spatula so you don't tear up your um, pots when you're cooking with it. And what we're going to do is cook this first. And I like to cook in stages so that when we do get it right, um, we don't throw anything away. We'll let this cook. And then what I'll do is put the onions and bell peppers. We'll take the, the pork out and let it drain so that we don't have a lot of grease. And then what I'll do is put the onions and bell peppers in that so we can take advantage of the seasoning from the, um, the pork and we can also get rid of the grease. Um, again, I'm using two different kinds of sausage. This is a kielbasa. Uh, if you're watching your fat, you can go with the, the beef. This particular dish I think watching your fat is a moot point. Um, we're going for flavor today, not health. And it is going to be delicious. I like to cut these up a little bit. Um, again, if you have a preference on size, do it however you want to. I like these at this particular size so you get flavor. If you leave them whole in the round piece like that, all you end up tasting is you'll get a piece of sausage and that's all you'll end up tasting. Um, by cutting them up a little bit, when you get your spoon or your fork in there, you'll be able to taste the chicken, you'll be able to taste the onions, you'll be able to taste the peppers, and you'll taste both kinds of sausage, and it just brings all the different flavors together, which is always a good thing. Okay. I've covered this in the past. Always, always, always use a good sharp knife. And if you have a knife sharpener or a stone, um, I have one of those two blade things you can just pull the knife through. I, I sharpen it before I use it every time. Um, there's nothing in the world that's worse than trying to cook with a dull knife. Not to mention, as I've told before, if you ever cut yourself with a dull knife, it hurts twice as bad with a dull knife as it does with a sharp one. You can spend all day sitting here trying to peel the onion and get them so you can save it. Onions are cheap. Just do that, and that way you get everything out of the way real quick. We're gonna use two different kinds of onions. I like red onions, and I love Vidalias when they're in season. Unfortunately, this is the winter, and we'll get the Vidalias a little bit later on in a couple of months, and those will be just wonderful. They're sweeter, and we get to support our brothers down in Georgia a little bit, as opposed to our friends in Peru, where these come from. We're going to use a pound of each sausage, one of the breakfast sausage, um, and one of the kielbasa. We're going to use one whole chicken. Um, I like, if you're a purist, like I said, everybody and their brother has a recipe on how to make a chicken perlo. Um, some people prefer to get your chicken raw and then you can boil it in the water and you can use the chicken broth. That is a great way to do it. Also, you end up with some extra chicken broth. The great thing about making your own chicken broth is after you take it out and measure it, so that you get the right amount of rice with your broth, is you can save the rest of the broth. I'll use a um, just a regular 
ice tray that you, like your grandma used to have, and fill that up with the chicken broth and freeze it. And then put that in a Ziploc bag so next time you cook green beans or collards or anything like that, you can just drop that ice tray in there and you've got your seasoning already in it. And if you're too lazy to do that like I am, you can just buy a box of chicken broth and use that. I'm a little bit impatient, so I prefer to buy my chicken already done. And the truth is, you can buy a chicken, rotisserie chicken, already cooked, and they're about the same price as a raw chicken. And you don't have to worry about handling chicken. About that. Peppers and onions, the dis density is so different. Um, I prefer to cook them separately. And, but in this case, it's not going to hurt them to cook together. Um, try not to overcook it because you don't want it to be mushy. And if you have a little texture to it, a little crunch, just makes it a little bit different. It tastes good. I also like to keep my mouth shut when I'm cutting onions so your eyes don't water up, but that kind of makes for dull television. So my eyes are burning right now. So you can all laugh. Okay. Now, we'll go back here and check on our pork. You can see the nice, all the grease. Some people call it grease, some people call it flavor. The one we're making today is going to be mild. If you like your food hot, you can make, I have made this that it was so hot it would burn your mouth, but at the same time it was so good nobody could stop eating it. Um, that's just about perfect. But instead of using just regular breakfast sausage, you can use the um, hot or the extra hot breakfast sausage. And it really does add a lot. Now, we've got that done. Let's drop the pork in there. And this is already cooked, like all kielbasa. It just, it's ready to go. So all we wanna do is put a little glaze on it, brown it up a little. We'll be right back and we'll take the chicken apart and then we'll brown our um, vegetables and we'll get right back to it. Thank you for joining us. We'll be right back. Hello, welcome back to Cooking with PRTC and we're making a chicken bog. We've browned our pork, breakfast pork, breakfast sausage, and we've browned the kielbasa. And all I did with the kielbasa was to let it sit in here until it got a nice glaze on it. Kielbasa you can actually eat raw, um, or not raw, it's pre-cooked. Again, the more you cook it, it just brings out a little of the flavor. And you can see it has a nice pretty glaze on it. Caramelization, if you will. And that's what we're going to look for in a second when we put our vegetables in there. You can sit there and do your vegetables separately, as I said a minute ago. But it's also, you can make this as hard as you want to, or we can keep it as simple as possible. We're going to take our onions, white onion, red onion, and yellow bell pepper. Personally, you can use a red bell pepper, an orange bell pepper, or a green bell pepper. I was just trying to get some color into it. Mix them all down in there. Let them get coated with all that wonderful, healthy pork oil. Turn the heat back up. We're going to let that sit until it caramelizes and brings out some more of the flavor. We're going to drop in there just a little bit of minced garlic. Um, you can buy this anywhere, and there's 
13 different varieties of this. Uh, about a good tablespoon. Um, what the heck, let's do two. Um, this is roasted. They have plain, they have organic, they have packed in olive oil. Um, I like roasted. That's what we're using today. Put that in there and let that one sit. We'll come back over here and we're gonna disassemble a chicken. And again, this is a rotisserie chicken from a local grocery store. I try not to use the um, skin. At this point, being healthy is a moot point, but you know, any kind of thing you can do to stay a little bit healthier is one thing. Try and pick off all the gristle. Um, wings are great. There's not a whole lot of meat on them. If you get these when they're hot, they come a lot, come apart a lot better. But who cares? It's a little messy. And if you're a purist, you will make this and you'll do your chicken in a pot by itself and you'll save it. I'm not a purist. I'm very impatient. And that's why I like to do it this way. I know what some of you are thinking is that, well, now you don't have the chicken broth. Well, they sell chicken broth. And they also sell chicken bouillon, which I just love because it makes my life easy. Okay. Breast comes apart easy, of course. That's where most of our meat is. If I can get it apart in the right place, we'll let Jason take the wishbone home with him. And if I break it, he won't get it. Ta-da! How about that? Save that for our talented cameraman. Y'all don't know how hard it is not to eat while you're cooking. I'm sure y'all don't want to watch that on TV. It does come apart pretty easy when it's cold, but and you don't burn your fingers. If you don't have anything else to do, you can save this, and put it in a bucket of water, and make a chicken soup, dump some vegetables in there and have a chicken vegetable soup. I do that at Christmas when we're finished with the turkey. Is save the carcass, put it back in your bucket or your bowl and boil it down a little bit. Add your vegetables, a can of V8 juice, a big can obviously, and then some um, frozen vegetables and you make a really good vegetable soup, a turkey vegetable soup. If you like your chicken bigger, don't cut it up so small. If you like your chicken smaller, cut it up some more. Okay. okay. That gelatin you see is just comes from the chicken getting cold. In all honesty, you can put it in there, add some flavor to the chicken or to the perlo. Okay. We got that. Okay. What we'll do right now is put that in our little bowl. Walk over here and put everything back into the bowl or the pot with the pork and the vegetables. Stir that a little bit. You can see they've got, they've wilted. They're not overly cooked, not mushed, but it's got a nice glaze on it. Okay. Dump our chicken in. And our sausage. Okay. Let that cook first couple of minutes and we'll come right back. We'll add the liquid and let that warm up and we'll add the rice. 
All right, we'll be right back with more cooking uh, with PRTC and we'll add the rice and get all this cleaned up and start on our next part. Thank you for joining us. Hi, welcome back to Cooking with PRTC. I'm your host, Mark McCroy, and we're gonna finish up on our chicken bog. Um, we've got the vegetables brown, the sausage and the meat are all in there together. Um, I told you earlier, instead of using the fresh chicken broth, we're going to use a can of chicken broth or a box. With this, they've got low sodium, which is always good because then you can add your own salt and bring it to the flavor you want. Plus, we're all trying to watch out for our sodium for our blood pressure. Okay, now we've got that out of the way. These are Rotel tomatoes, a um, little bit extra moisture. The other thing is it gives it a little bit of bite, not a lot, as if you, if you had used the hot kielbasa and the hot um, breakfast sausage and the hot um, Texas peat or whatever but you can make this as hot as you want and it's not gonna make it bad, believe me. Four cups of water, two cups of rice. Just follow your regular recipe for rice. We're gonna bring this to a boil and then let it sit for 20 minutes. Put that back, bring it back to a boil again and we're gonna be fine with that. Now, what we're gonna do here is for a side dish, we're gonna have some bread. There's a hundred different kinds of bread. Your deli section at your local grocery has um, French bread, Italian bread. This is a bread with cheese on it already and it is delicious. It's also got a little onion in it. You need a good bread knife. Anything serrated will cut better than a flat knife. In the past, what we have done is take the bread and wrap it in foil. That keeps it moist. We're going to go for a glaze, not a glaze, but a broil this time and kind of make it chunky or a little harder. Different texture, different flavor. Okay, eh, cut off another piece. Okay, put that right here. Take our butter along with a little olive oil. And we pre-soften the butter. Probably wouldn't hurt to soften it up a little bit more, but it'll be all right. Okay. Olive oil helps give it the flavor and texture, and it also cuts down on your calories. Put that on and just spread it out. Some people prefer not to cook with butter. They'll use the margarines or the different yogurt spreads. That's all fine. Um, I just like butter. I like the way it tastes. I like the way it cooks. If you're using it with um, baking, I have found nothing better in the world. Oil, um, yogurt spreads, anything. Nothing gives your cake the consistency that you want like butter and farm fresh eggs. Okay, now, got that aside. Freshly grated Parmesan. You can get the ones if you prefer it, like they have in the little plastic containers. This has a tremendous amount of more flavor. It has a better texture and it's fresh. If you're feeling real good, go buy some fresh Parmesan and then grate it yourself. You will be shocked at the difference if you've never tried it before. A little bit of garlic salt. We don't want it to taste just like garlic. This is a Italian garlic mix. It has some oregano already in it. Again, just gives a little bit of a different flavor. We're gonna put this in the oven on broil and watch it. Shouldn't take but a couple of minutes.
and we'll be right back and get our side dish together, which is gonna be some spinach and some mushrooms. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Cooking with TRTC. Our side dish today is gonna to be wilted spinach and mushroom caps. I'm gonna start off with just, I don't care for the stalk, cut them up. Again, sharp knife, nice chunk so you get a good flavor. These are baby portabellas. It's not a whole lot to cutting them up. If you prefer, um, shiitakes, they have a little bit different texture. They are different flavor as well. Nothing wrong with either one of them. I don't care for the white mushrooms, they just don't have any flavor to me. And they have a rubbery texture. But these but puppies here, these are great. If you're a vegetarian, which thank God I'm not, you can always go with, um, we can have portobello cooking one day. And we'll take the, the big portobellos and have a nice side dish with those. Actually, you can make a whole meal out of them. You can put those on hamburger buns. Grill them on your grill and they are delicious. Okay. We're gonna do the mushrooms first. If we had an onion, we could put the onion in there as well. Uh, red one, white one, whichever one you like. The onion would give it, again, more flavor, a little minced garlic, just whatever you want. We'll put these in there first because they're going to take longer to cook than the spinach. This is our butter and olive oil mixture, which I like so much because, again, it cuts down on our calories and it gets the wonderful flavor of the butter. It's all gonna get mixed together anyway. So that'll be fine. Okay. If you're cooking at home and you have your cast iron skillet, to me that's the best thing in the world to cook in. Um, for one thing, that's what my mom always cooked in. The other thing is it gets, the heat just tends to go in it better. Um, and I like the flavor better. It just has a different texture to it, to me. But nonstick cookware, you can't beat it. We're gonna let that wilt a little bit, and then we'll add the spinach. We've let our mushrooms wilt, put the spinach in there. Let this wilt as well. And when we come back, we'll have a little perlo, some bread, and some spinach. Y'all stick around, we'll get ready to eat. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back to Cooking with PRTC. We finished up our chicken perlo, chicken bog, whatever you want to call it. We have our spinach with um, wilted mushrooms and our garlic bread. And we're going to come back and introduce you to our guest and we'll have some dinner. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to Cooking with PRTC. We have our guest today, Russ and Carol, and they're going to taste our chicken perlo and spinach and bread and tell us what they think about it. Ladies and gentlemen, dig in. Thank you. Total prep time on this from start to finish was right at an hour, so it doesn't take much time. Um, and again, the flavor in this stuff is just fantastic, so please try it at home. Thank you again for joining us with Cooking with PRTC. Join us next time. Thank you.
Welcome back to the PRTC. We finished up our chicken perlo, chicken bog, whatever you want to call it. We have our spinach with um, wilted mushrooms and our garlic bread. And we're going to come back and introduce you to our guest and we'll have some dinner. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to Cooking with PRTC. We have our guests today, Russ and Carol, and they're going to taste our chicken perlo and spinach and bread and tell us what they think about it. Ladies and gentlemen, dig in. Thank you. Total prep time on this from start to finish was right at an hour, so it doesn't take much time. Um, and again, the flavor in this stuff is just fantastic. So please try it at home. Thank you again for joining us with Cooking with PRTC. Join us next time. Thank you.